Hello everyone, my name is Michael Torrio and I'm an Associate Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS. And today I'll be walking you through how to create your own open search service domain while diving deep into the different configuration options. From the Amazon Open Search Service homepage, click on Create Domain to get started on the top right. And first you're gonna to want to enter a domain name of your choice. For video purposes, I will put test domain. And for the domain creation method, I'll select standard create so that we can go through the different configuration options. For templates, choose the option that best matches the purpose of the domain you're creating. Production domains use multi-AZ and dedicated master nodes for high availability, whereas selecting dev test gives you the option of being multi-AZ or in a single availability zone. And for this video, I'll select dev test. Under deployment options, choosing domain with standby enforces a number of best practices, such as a specified data node count, master node count, instance type, replica count, and software update settings, whereas selecting domain without standby gives you more control of how you want to configure your availability zones and data nodes. And for the, uh, video purposes, I'll select domain without standby, and I'll leave it set to three availability zones. Under engine options, it defaults to the latest version of OpenSearch to use. We do recommend that you choose the latest version of OpenSearch, but you do have the ability to select an older version of OpenSearch or Elasticsearch if you choose to include older versions here. And if you choose an OpenSearch version for your domain, enabling compatibility mode will make OpenSearch report its version at 7.10, which allows certain clients and plugins that check the version before connecting to continue working with the service. And now scrolling to data nodes, you're gonna to want to select an instance type for your data nodes that is most appropriate for your use case. For this video, I'll leave it to its recommendation of the r6g.large.search instances. And for equal distribution across three availability zones, it's recommended to have the number of nodes as a multiple of three. However, if we opted to use a domain without standby and two availability zones, you must choose instances in multiples of two. For storage type, select Amazon EPS, and the volume types available in the dropdown list will depend on the instance type you've chosen. Depending on the use case, you configure the EPS storage size per node here, and we do have documentation that goes in depth into selecting the appropriate instance type and the right sizing of the storage, which will be in the description. And by selecting GP3, you can fine tune performance and right size your data ingest at an additional cost by adjusting additional IOPS and throughput beyond standard provisions. Keep in mind for every gigabyte of storage space that you provide, you can allocate an additional three IOPS. Before using UltraWarm, you must have dedicated master nodes enabled. And if you selected to use multi-AZ with standby, three dedicated master nodes are already enabled, which is the recommended amount for a production domain. Enabling UltraWarm provides a cost-effective way to store large amounts of read-only data on Amazon OpenSearch service. And because warm indexes are read-only, unless you return them to hot storage, UltraWarm is best suited for immutable data, such as logs. Enabling cold storage lets you store any amount of infrequently accessed or historical data on your domain and analyze it on demand at a lower cost than other storage tiers and is appropriate if you want to do periodic research or forensic analysis on your older data. For domains running OpenSearch or Elasticsearch 5.3 or later, you are not able to configure the snapshot configuration and it is set to a default configuration of hourly. If you are using an older version of Elasticsearch, then you are able to change the snapshot configuration here. If you want to use a custom endpoint rather than the standard one Amazon OpenSearch service creates for you, choose enable custom endpoint here and provide a name and certificate using AWS Certificate Manager. For this video, I'll uncheck this. 
Under network, you have two options here, VPC, which is recommended, and public access. Because of a VPC's logical isolation, domains that reside within a VPC have an extra layer of security compared to domains that use public endpoints. And while dom public domains are accessible from any internet-connected device, VPC domains require some sort of VPN or proxy. So I'll leave this set to VPC access here, and I'll leave the IP address type to dual stack mode so that our resources can communicate over IPv4, IPv6, or both. For the VPC, I'll select the VPC I want this domain deployed in. And since I opted to use three av availability zones, I'll select three different subnets and Amazon Open Search Service will place a VPC endpoint and Elastic Network interfaces in each of the subnets I specify. Here I'll select the security group that I have in my VPC to allow applications to reach the open search service domain on all the ports and protocols exposed by the domain. And by default, OpenSearch uses this predefined role to access our VPC and to place a VPC endpoint and network interfaces in the subnets of the VPC. Fine grain access control, or FGAC, as the name implies, is what allows you to implement detailed security roles to your domain, allowing control of what specific users or roles can or cannot see down to the document and field level. When enabled, it requires you to designate a master user account role to begin defining those roles. And you can either create a master user by specifying an IMARN or creating a master user here. And for this video, I'll create a master user. And by enabling SAML authentication for open search dashboards, uh, it lets you to use third-party identity providers to log into dashboards, manage fine-grained access control, search your data, and build visualizations. Open search service supports providers that use the SAML 2.0 standard. So for example, Okta, Keycloak, Active Directory Federation Services, Auto, and AWS IAM Identity Center. Also, you do have the ability to enable uh, Amazon Cognito to authenticate and protect the default installation of open search dashboards. Amazon Cognito authentication is optional and available only for domains using OpenSearch or Elasticsearch 5.1 or later. And here the access policy defines where requests to your domains are authorized to come from. This is a separate layer of access to what you define as part of fine grain access control. And by selecting only use fine grain access control, you allow access to your domain from all sources, but they must still authenticate themselves via fine grain access control, so your domain is still, still secure. And since we enabled fine grain access control, under encryption, these configurations are automatically selected, such as require HTTPS for all traffic to your domain, node-to-node -node encryption, and encryption of data at rest. These options are also pre-selected if you choose the multi-AZ with the standby deployment option. And for encryption at rest, you can either select to use an AWS own key to have Amazon Open Search Service create an AWS KMS encryption key on your behalf, or you can opt to use your own KMS key. Here, configuring an off-peak window specifies a start time to schedule service software, updates and auto-tune optimizations that require a blue-green deployment. Having an off-peak time specified uh, minimizes strain on a cluster's dedicated master nodes during high traffic periods. Auto-tune uses performance and usage metrics from your open search cluster to suggest memory-related configuration changes. These optional changes improve cluster speed and stability.
and by selecting to have an off-peak window, that schedules a reoccurring time window during which Autotune updates your domain. Here you can select uh, whether or not you want to enable automatic software updates, and you also have the ability to add tags to describe your domain so that you can categorize and filter on that information. Under cluster advanced settings here, this first option here specifies whether explicit references to indexes are allowed inside the body of HTTP request to your domain. This value is automatically checked, but unchecking it prevents users from bypassing access control for sub-resources. Field data cache allocation specifies the percentage of Java heap space that is dedicated to the field data. By default, this setting is 20% of the JVM heap. And the max clause count here specifies the maximum number of clauses allowed in a Lucene Boolean query, where the default is 1024. And after we confirm all of the configuration changes are to our liking here in the summary, we can click on create here. And within 20 minutes, we will have our own open search service domain. You'll see a progress bar indicating that your domain is being created. And this may take several minutes to complete based on your configurations. And before we wrap up, I want to mention a couple of additional points. First, everything we did here through the AWS Management Console can also be done using infrastructure as code tools like Terraform or AWS CloudFormation. Using these tools allows you to provision resources in a repeatable and automated fashion. Second, since we created this domain within a VPC, we can access OpenSearch dashboards directly over the internet for security reasons. In an upcoming video, I'll show you how to set up a proxy server to securely access OpenSearch dashboards from your local machine.